All right, what's going on, y'all? Um, this one, we're gonna solve problem 210 um, using the potential energy approach. It's easy. Um, I'm only gonna stop this video once I reach the, the matrix. Um, I'm gonna put in the description if you wanna continue it. I solve it in, in another video. Um, just check it out, but uh, let's go ahead and get started with this one. All right, so this problem is a little different than the other ones, right? We're dealing with a whole system now, not just one spring, but the, the goal is the same. So it's pi P, total potential energy is equal to the internal strain, uh, internal strain energy of every spring element, plus the potential energy due to external forces. So in this case, um, what I've noticed, I remember uh, doing these problems, um, this term, Right here, this omega, it's usually going to have a one more term than the internal strain energy. So this one right here is due to the number of nodes, right? So it's one, two, three, and four. And then uh, the internal strain energy, it's uh, due to the number of springs. So one, two, and three. Um, that's usually the case, but there are um, other cases where you will have more springs than nodes. And I guess just maybe equal amounts of nodes and springs but in this case we have three springs right so it's going to be u is going to equal u1 right the first spring plus u2 plus u u3 right three springs and then omega is going to equal uh there's four of them four nodes one plus two plus three plus okay, it's a little confusing to write these four there we go um just finding them it's pretty simple i'm not going to go into theory if you want to see the theory i kind of cover it in problems 218 right all those there's two videos on 218 uh but the point is u internal strain energy is equal to one half kx squared where x is displacement and then omega is equal to negative fx force times displacement so that's kind of what we do here uh, for each node and then for each spring uh, we could go ahead and start let me set them equal to each other first you'll see what I mean so u1 that's gonna equal k1 right oh it's one half k1 right uh k1 in this case k1 is a thousand but i'll just leave it k1 and the displacement that displacement is u2 minus u1 it's between nodes two and one okay so u2 minus u1 squared right half kx squared that's all it is similarly for the other two right it's going to be one half k2, right? I'm doing this one now. Let me label them two, one, and three. Okay. <clears throat> so we got k2, and then it's between nodes three, two, and three. So it's u3 minus u2 squared. Similarly, for the third one, one half k3. And that is between nodes four and two, right? So u4 minus u2, final minus initial. It's just a displacement. This is just a, a distance. So when you apply an 8,000 pound force here to the left, everything's gonna move some distance, right? Node two is gonna move, obviously. So it's gonna be a delta between two and three, two and four, and one and two. So that's kind of just what these three terms are saying. And finally, um, omega, I'm not gonna write them out because there's just a no point right it's negative f1 x1 for uh what well, would be u1 uh, negative f1 u1 for node one negative f2 u2 for node two negative f3 u3 for node three and then same thing for four so we could go ahead and start assembling the equation potential energy equation that's going to equal it's u plus omegas right so all the u's plus all the omegas u1 we determined it's one half i'm gonna go ahead and start uh foiling them out i think that's what they call it right 
uh, so it's u2 squared minus 2u2 u1 plus u1 squared okay I'm gonna do the same for all of them plus 1 half k2 u3 squared minus 2u3 u2 plus u2 squared right uh, plus one half k3 that is between nodes u4 and u2 u4 squared minus 2 u4 u2 plus u2 squared i'm just uh, expanding these uh, uh squares right here and then the omegas they're all negative so the omegas equal to negative f1 x1 etc all that good stuff so it's negative f1 u1 minus f2 u2 minus f3 u3 minus f4 u4 all right um keep uh, let's keep simplifying it more right um these all these three terms times k3 over 2 and i guess the same for the other two terms uh so we'll get pi p is equal to k1 u2 squared so one half k1 u2 squared minus k1 half cancels out with two so it's k1 u2 u1 plus one half k1 right one half k1 u1 squared so that was the first parentheses from here to here multiply by that now the next one i'll make it spacious right uh one half k2 u3 squared right and then when you multiply these two you'll get k2 or negative k2 u3 u2 multiply these two you'll get one half positive one half k2 u2 squared okay uh next one one half k3 u4 squared there might be a shortcut to this i don't know right but this is the way i learned it so and it's right so i guess that's all that matters u4 u2 right that times that plus one half k3 u2 squared then minus the other ones f1 u1 minus f2 u2 minus f3 u3 minus f4 u4 so look this is the potential energy right the cool part is i don't know for some reason i like this thing but it's just too long as opposed to the direct stiffness method so what we're going to do is we're going to take the partial derivative of the whole pi p equation with respect to each node so let's go ahead and we got to set it equal to zero because just like in the previous examples that's where the minimum potential energy occurs so uh what, what is this called partial partial of the equation with respect to u1 is equal to zero and that's gonna be so you look for the terms with u1 it looks complicated but it really isn't look there's nothing here all this goes to zero there's a u1 right here when you take a derivative with respect to u1 and it's not squared or anything it just goes away so it's negative k1 u2 there's a u1 right here take the derivative half cancels out with the two so you get plus k1 u1 there's no u1 here there's no u1 here there's a minus f1 u1 here so you take the derivative you'll get minus f1 and that's it there's no more u1s so that one's done do the same thing with respect to every other node right so zero now let's look for the u2s it's one right here so that is k1 u2 okay and then there's one right here minus k1 u1 okay 
there's no u2 no u2 right here there's one right here so it becomes minus k2 u3 there's a u2 right there plus sorry give me a second plus k2 u2 there's no u2 there's one right here minus k3 u4 Uh, I'm assuming you know how to do partials, partial derivatives. Um, and this one is K3U2. And minus F2. And that's it. Uh, next one. Wow, well, one was long. But I don't expect all of them to be this long. Kind of makes sense why U2 is the longest because U2, uh, that node, is involved with every spring. So it kind of makes sense why that one has the most terms. Um, set the partial with respect to u3 equal to zero. So u3, no u3 here, none here, none here. Right here, you got k2u3 minus k2u2. No u3, u3, nope, 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 negative. So minus f3. And finally, the last one, u4, right? All right, that's equal to zero, two. There's no u4 here, none here, none here, none here, none here, here, u4, right here. So that becomes k3, u4. There's a u4 here, minus k3, u2. None here, and then minus f4. All right, now look, this next step really isn't necessary, but I'm gonna do it just so you could see what's going on. Um, now what I'm gonna do, they're all equal to zero, right? I'm gonna move all the Fs, the forces, to the other side of the equation, so they all become positive. F1, F2, F3, and F4. And these are X, right, in the X direction. So I guess everything needed an X, but it's the same. We're not dealing with the y direction um they're all moved to the other side of the equation now look what i'm gonna do anything with u1 i'm gonna put it in this right here i'm gonna start it here there's a u1 here it's a positive k1 k1 and that's it right there's nothing else for this equation for u1 uh so we close it up and that's uh u1 right here now for F2, the second equation, all the U1s, there's one right here, a negative K1, uh, and that's about it, right? Just negative K1, and that's U1. For F3, how many U1s are there? There's zero, zero. For four, how many U1s are there? Zero. So all these, that's the, the U1, okay? Now let's do the U2. So it's gonna be plus, they're all plus, okay? And then I'll do parentheses if they're negative and all that good stuff. Now look for the U2s. We got a negative K1, and that's it. Negative K1, that's it. We have a K1 at U2. We have a K2 at U2. And we have a K3 at U2. So K1, let me move it up. K1 plus K2 plus K3. Okay. Second one, we got a U2 right here, negative K2. And then finally, we have a negative K3 right there. Okay, and all these are U2s. I like to make it look neat. And then finally, next one. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but for U3s now, right? So U3s, there's zero in the first equation, zero. In the second equation, we have negative K2, and that's it. Negative K2. <clears throat> U3 right here, positive K2, and that's it. Just one K2. There's nothing here. That's zero. <sighs> okay, so all these are U3. Let me move it up again. Okay, and finally U4.
All right, so there's nothing here, U4, right? So this is zero. Um, for U4 right here, we have negative K3, and that's it. Negative K3. We have nothing here, so zero. And we only have one right here, positive K3. And that's it. So I hope you could see it now. You've been understanding the, the previous lessons in FEA. You're kind of seeing the matrix already. So check this out. And don't worry, we'll verify the matrix, okay? Don't just take my word for it. But So the vector, right, is your force vector. F1x, F2x, F3x, F4x. Now the matrix is nodes 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and start filling in the, the matrix. So the first column right here, K1, negative K1, 0, 0. So it's K1, negative K1, 0, and 0. Next one, this is the biggest term, so I'll write that one first. K1 plus K2 plus K3. Uh, then we have negative K1 up top, right? Uh, 1, then negative K2, negative K3. All right. Then next one, we have negative K2, K2, 0, and 0. Then we have negative K3, 0 up top, 0, and K3. And then the U's, right? U1, U2, U3, U4. U1, U2, U3, and U4. So that's it. I'm not going to keep it going, but look, let me verify it real quick. So using the direct stiffness method, I'm assuming you know how to do it if you're doing potential energy now, but K1, right, is between nodes 2 and 1. So it is nodes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4. So again, it's between nodes two, 1 and 2. So it's going to be on K1, on position 1, 1. Uh, sorry, let me start all over. It's nodes 1, 2, 1, 2. So it's these four positions. Should be a positive K1, negative, negative, positive. That one right there. So cool, K1 is verified. K2, that one's between nodes 2 and 3. So between nodes 2 and 3, 2 and 3, that's this one, this one, this one, this one. It's positive K2, negative, negative, positive. That one's verified. This one, the third one, is between nodes 2 and 4. So 2, 4, 2, 4. It's this position, this position, this position, this position. So it's K3, negative K3, negative K3, and K3. So to finish the problem, um, I already did this problem in another video, so just check the description. I'll tell you what uh, time frame in that other video you could just leave off of and continue it. But you just pretty much just plug in your K values, K1, K2, K3, right? 1,000, 5, and then 500. Um, plug them into this you apply your boundary condition so nodes 1 3 and 4 will not move so you're going to erase u1 u3 and u4 you're going to put 0 uh, 0 here and 0 here so your vector should be 0 u2 0 0 you apply your force boundary conditions now you have a negative 8000 right because this is our positive x direction you have a negative 8000 at node 2 so you're going to erase this node 2 right here and plug it, plug in uh, negative 8,000. So your vector will be F1x, negative 8,000, F3x, and F4x. You have four equations, four unknowns. I do it in the other video, but just FYI, that's what you would do. But I'm just going to stop it here. But yeah, that's the answer, doing it the potential energy way. But that's the top and yeah, that's the bottom.